Okie pokey weirdos, Reverie Cosplay at your service. And yes, my wonderful weirdos, I have heard your cries. So here is more Lucy Lacemaker fursuit content. Now that we're done with foam, I'm going to make my duct tape dummy a duct tape dummy. That foam bodysuit that I created, its video is taking a little longer to pull together, but I will bring that one to you eventually. To start, I wrapped everything in plastic. These are actually paint tarps left over from when I did my full body duct tape dummy. <laughs> I had to make sure to cover every inch of this bodysuit, essentially making another duct tape dummy. Everything had to be secure and covered. Okay, top half done. Bottom half, time to start. Round two. Ding ding! Wrapping everything in plastic wrap was a very long and tedious process, but well worth it once I had the pattern. Made things so much easier. Doing the toes was fun. Later I decided not to use the foot pattern that I created, and I would be using a draping method later on. Well, I ran out of duct tape, which means I'll have to pick up more another time. So for now, I will be drawing the fur pattern on her, but I do want to draw both sides of the body because her fur pattern is different. If the fursuit was symmetrical, then we'd be able to just do one side and duplicate that. But Lucy Lacemaker is far from symmetrical. Then I used masking tape to map out all the red spots. That way any very large red pieces I wouldn't take the time to make out of white fur just to cut it out and not use that white fur. And don't forget the hole for the tail. I mapped out where the tail would lay and then wrote in I guess, jail? Yeah, that spot for writing wasn't very good. Finally, I can move on to the second leg. Lots more wrapping. And then I forgot to make room for the gloves to fit inside the fursuit. Therefore, there's that section. X's marking where the seams should meet up once I put them back together. And Sharpie all over my arm. Alrighty. Polka dots marked. Clothing seams drawn in. Now to cut her out. Cutting this out with dull scissors was very difficult and not the greatest idea. Release! There we go. That's an arm. I went and numbered all of the spots so that I wouldn't lose which ones were what size and what shape. Now to transfer everything to fabric so that it can be more easily manipulated around the body parts and it'll be easier for me to figure out how to transfer the shapes to the fake fur. Honestly, I should have ironed out the old bed sheet material before I got started with this, but I didn't think about that until later. Wah wah. Don't forget, we gotta use washable markers for this because it is white fur. I also mapped out where all the spots were, that way I wouldn't lose my placements.
putting everything together, I would be able to do a test run on the bodysuit before making everything out of fur, and then realizing that I'd cut something out incorrectly. Luckily, the majority of the patterns actually fit the suit. Then with these fabric patterns, I made sure to label every single corner and edge I could. This saved my butt, most definitely, throughout the whole process, so don't forget to label your patterns. Finally, to trace everything onto fur. I gave myself about an inch worth of seam allowance because I knew all the pieces would end up quote unquote shrinking because the sheets fabric is stretchy and the fake fur is not. Then I realized I traced everything backwards because I had to flip it for the fur to be facing outward. Therefore, retrace everything and cut it out with a sharp blade, making sure not to cut the fur itself and only the fur backing. I got fed up with measuring an inch with the ruler every single time, so I cut out a little piece of wood from a wooden dowel that was exactly an inch long, using that as a measurement instead. This made everything go much more quickly, and I am planning to use this method for plenty of other projects now. I got to a point where I didn't have enough white fur to make everything into big pieces, so I had to cut up my larger sections, reminding myself of where they all connected with my fancy labeling system. That way I could piece everything back together in one big section. I made sure to label all the fur directions, that way when I was transferring over to the fake fur, I could quadruple check that I was not drawing everything with the fur going the wrong direction. Thanks to this picture, now I know that number 24 sits at the top of the hip. And I can figure out which way the fur is supposed to go on all the other parts. And now it is time to pin everything together and get to sewing. There was a lot of sewing here. The main thing that you need to know is to tuck the fur into the seam. That way it's harder to tell from the outside that there is a seam there, but the inside seam isn't all bulky and takes up a whole bunch of room inside the fursuit. That is my Lucy Lacemaker fursuit thus far. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to stick around because I am still working on this project. Oh my goodness. This thing is taking forever. Yikes. <laughs> Wish me luck, and welcome to the madness. Why are we zoomed in like crazy? Okay, what does that shape remind you of?